people say, when did you start doing beadwork? Or when did you start doing art? And I always tell them it was in vitro. Fabulous artist. I came out of my mom's room and I said to the doctor, move, you're in my light. Don't you know I built the pyramid? Yeah. I am a master's house too. Oh, if you let me get hooked up for school, you know I built a spaceship too. Oh, use my I'm Joyce J. Scott. I'm a visual and performing artist who was born and, as we say, reared in Baltimore, Maryland. I've lived here all my life, not in this house, but in Baltimore City, in this house for over 40 years. My mother was an artist, and she taught me to do beadwork when I was around five, and I always did it. But my mother, as a textile artist, taught me how to bead by sewing into the fabric. I went to undergraduate school, and I kept using my mother's needle and thread as a passport to other countries. It was the thing that would initiate conversation and maybe a residency, but it was also what everybody else knew. In 1976, I met a young native woman who taught me the peyote stitch. And everything in my life changed. I was always trying to work with translucency, but with fiber, light goes it's absorbed or it bounces off the surface. It's not translucent. Peyote Stitch allowed me to do anything that I wanted to do with beadwork. And you know, I'm a little like, you know, mad scientist inventor about beadwork. And it allowed me to do that without encumbrances. I didn't have to have a, a loom. I didn't have to have fabric. And it became a method of communication that Combine my mom's thing where you have a needle and thread and people will talk to you because somebody always sewed in their family with this ability to, to transmit light. And that means a lot to folks no matter what we say. And since people all over the world do beadwork, it was once again another page of that, that book of communication. Well, why did I even choose Harriet Tubman? Because she really makes me think of my mother. That's it. They were both little thunderbolts. Neither of them were five feet tall. They were both dark-skinned, and my mother told me what that meant to be dark-skinned in America. And they were go-getters. My mom would have been one of those people who would have been on the Underground Railroad dragging people out of the South. I chose Harriet Tubman because she is a great light for me about what you can be through all kinds of adversity. So this show has these different components. Harry's boudoir, that space that would have been a bedroom, dressing room, contemplative space. When I first started doing this, I thought, you'll have a vanity and a bed and a chair and some shackle, you know, the ubiquitous and her shackle. And then as I was going on, I realized that I don't have to do that. I can have a dream boudoir for her. I can have a closet that exemplifies my way of working, as well as what I think the mysterious life of Harriet Tubman's inside would have been. I have two other site-specific installations outside. So they're like, Joyce, what do you want to do? What would you really want to do? <laughs> you should never ask me that. So the first thing I said was, maybe 13, 15 foot Harriet Tubman made out of like dirt. She'll be holding a big glass gun and she'll be wearing a beaded sack and she'll just like disappear over the length of the exhibition the way her memory did. And just the gun in her bag or whatever is left on the ground will be that memorial to Harriet. The second one outside is a 10 foot Harriet Tubman and the way we're doing it is gonna allow me to inlay different beadwork and glass into her. She'll be on a tri-level kind of space outside in front of a wall with a tree. So those tri-levels are going to be covered with quilts. That's a direct kiss blown to my mom and all the other African-American women who did that because they couldn't afford blankets. And that's just for Harriet African-American, but quilting is an international form of swaddling people in love. They're allowing me to do what I wish to do. That's a big deal which means that allows an audience to see what I'm up to. I'm honored by that. And boy, does that hearken well for all of those people 
whose shoulders I'm standing on right now, who never had that ability.